This conference will now be recorded. So uh, Composable Finance uh, originally was a client of mine, probably uh, from about like September, October of last year. Um, over the past few months, maybe five, six months ago, uh, I was approached by someone on the team, um, you know, ended up in a conversation if it made sense to, I guess, come on board internally. Um, so, you know, one thing after another ended up here. Um, essentially, what we do as a company, so uh, what we have built is a, essentially a layer one blockchain. Um, it's based within Polkadot as an ecosystem, um, but uh, it, it's really much more chain agnostic in terms of the goals. Um, it's more kind of widespread covering the majority of blockchain. Um, again, starts with our, our layer one uh, kind of architecture, our ecosystem, Picasso. Uh, on top of that, so we have built a decentralized exchange. Um, I think the reality is, you know, you'll hear about a million different exchanges out there. Um, everyone will tell you, you know, this is why we're, you know, different, this, that. Um, I think the the real goal is, you know, think of how like a, a blockchain works, bringing in people that then, you know, add on to that network and, and continue kind of building. There needs to be some type of way to bring in funding in and out, you know, have have some type of liquidity on chain to encourage people to come in, you know, both as users, as builders. Um, so again, that, that's kind of how we started. Uh, still pre-product at the moment for that uh, DEX. It's called Pablo. Uh, we'll be launching over the next few months. Um, and then the kind of majority of our, our other projects, uh, not to go too deep into detail in terms of the tech side, but really revolve around the idea of interoperability. Um, you think of something like, you know, Ethereum or Bitcoin where everyone really understands it, knows what it is, even if they're, you know, not super high level users in that sense. Um, if as a user, you start kind of playing around, you know, you open, you know, I don't know, MetaMask, a Coinbase, or Coinbase custodial wallet, um, you know, you hear about a really cool company, Osmosis, that's, you know, in, in Cosmos, you want to start playing with money on there uh, as like a DeFi user. Um, there's not necessarily the infrastructure in place to allow those type of transactions. So, you know, a lot of what we do will you know, leverage existing bridging protocols. Uh, we do a lot of work with Cosmos, IBC, and some other fun tech uh, to kind of help help those initiatives and you know really promote the growth of the industry overall. So, uh, long long story, but you know, a uh, cool company. You know, fortunate to kind of have ended up there myself. Now, Les, I'm, I'm on your site right now, right? And I'm looking at careers, and I see you need a QA person, legal counsel a senior substract developer i have no idea what that is a zk cryptographer and somebody for developer relations so i'm gonna let you go over what you're looking for tonight what you're presenting tonight and then we'll kick it off with you and then follow it up uh I, I hope you all don't drop off we do have um hold on let me get make sure i get the light you don't, you don't have a last name in here hold on let me make sure i got it right here uh randolph i see you down there uh it, i'm assuming your last name is rain last name is randolph and you're going by james but uh james is over the salesforce uh he'll be presenting tonight as well too uh, a lot of y'all we wondering like where jobs are at and where where it's where's the next 10 to 15 years and i i've been giving everybody the the yeah, the my take on what the next 10 to 15 years looks like. Um, so I'm gonna leave that on you all to also give like the next 10 to 15 years to me, the next 10 to 15 years, again, cryptography, blockchain, and blockchain doesn't necessarily have to be web three. It can be security as well too. Cryptography can fall under security as well too. Um, anything around edge computing, uh, AI, uh, mainframes are not going anywhere. They're still hiring people for mainframes, believe it or not. Um, and then, too, uh, I talked about this on on uh, on our show on Saturdays with the with the with the intro of uh, EV and well EV and EVTOL with um, electric taxis. Uh, we 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 see the robots coming. That you, it's nothing you can do to stop that. In fact, the U.S. is probably behind on robots versus somewhere like China, uh, Singapore and so forth. But not, all, not only that, um, what the, the way we communicate and how we get around the cities and so forth and the security behind that is, com is coming around. And I, I think everybody knows about the latest news with Apple going into healthcare, they're creating uh, a healthcare company based upon the smartwatch and so forth. So now you can get insurance and stuff through 
your smartwatch and there and you're going to continue to see more and more of little nuances in companies and companies being acquired hired right you're going to see more and more just like i talked about with kroger um, um buying um albertsons right um, you're going to see the the bigger conglomerates, the, the threes and the fours or the ones and the twos really combine together and start, you know, changing how you shop for groceries, changing where you shop at for groceries. So um, all of this, if you want to be in this space, in this tech space, you need to understand the landscape for the next 10 to 15 years, not the next three. The next three is 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 what you're doing right now. The next 10 to 15 is a is a whole different landscape. And so you just need to be equipped with the right skills and understand where the industry is going and, and who you can uh, network with in order to be in that space. For that, I, I get off my soapbox. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Joe, let you run with it. Yeah, no, no of course. Um, and, and again, you know, I can go over some of the open positions and stuff we have. Uh, let me just pull up so I have kind of the accurate uh, kind of sheet. Um, but again, so I, I know you'd covered a few. So uh, we're doing some uh, QA hiring, um, I, again, on the legal side at the moment. Is, uh, now, um, legal counsel is is a bit tricky, obviously. Uh, we need someone who's, you know, a licensed attorney in that sense, but also, you know, has an understanding uh, a little bit more globally with just some of those transactional, some of the uh, different financial regulations in place. Um, we're very much a a DeFi company, you know, at, at the end of the day, we, we develop infrastructure, but still a lot of our products are, you know, financially focused in that sense. Um, for some of the other things, so uh, Substrate Developer, essentially what that is, is um, essentially a Rust developer. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with Rust, um, Substrate is a, a type of framework. Uh, it's commonly used in the Polkadot ecosystem um, within blockchain, but it is something where, uh, it allows you to kind of pick and play a little bit more just in terms of building a blockchain itself. Um, so, you know, again, for some of our infrastructure, um, we'll have roles like that. Um, but then, you know, of course, some some of those more standard positions as well. So we're always looking for front end, back end, uh, full stack developers in terms of our tech stack. So it, it's a lot of, you know, React, uh, JS, Vue.js, front end, uh, Node.js, back end. Um, back end, again, being a blockchain uh, company, we will use Substrate, but um, pretty kind of standard JS stack uh, typically. Um, and then we're also hiring for some different uh, protocol engineering roles. So uh, you think of like a Solidity developer, someone who's worked really uh, closely with smart contracts. Um, so again, always, always things that we're kind of on the lookout for on my end. Um, we, uh, we're actually having some talks internally now um, over the you know, next year or so, we're depending to, we're trying to pick a quarter, um, but the idea is we'd like to offer um, some different internships uh, potentially down the line. And, and again, so uh, for those of you that are you know, looking to move into a different position uh, you know, within blockchain as opposed to you know, Web2 or, or make that switch, um, you know, at some point we'll have those type of opportunities coming up uh, down the line here as well. Now, what are your, um, what's your, if you have a, what's your general turnaround time on the interview process? Like, is, are you five, are you five interviews? Yeah, no. It, 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 yeah, no, it, it really depends on the position, to be completely honest. It is, um, you know, someone that's going to be working uh, like ZK, which is uh, it's called Zero Knowledge. It's a type of cryptography, very, very math focused, working with different algorithms. Uh, your day to day is, you know, very different than if you're going to be uh, on the QA team uh, working through some of that, you know, debugging test cases. Um, so, again, just based on how those interview processes shape out, it's a little different. Um, overall, we, we typically have somewhere between a three to five uh, interview process, just depending on things like uh, level of seniority, as well as, you know, the specifics of the role itself. Um, we are completely remote as a company. So we have between 85 to 100 uh, team members, completely decentralized, um, you know, just about all over the world. Um, so it is something, too, where sometimes, uh, you know, we'll have to have two separate calls as opposed to having people you know, on the same meet, uh, just depending on where those teams are located. But um, again, you know, appreciate people's time and, you know, appreciate that, you know, interviewing is not a full-time job. You have a personal life. So, you know, I'd like to make sure we get people, you know, uh, feedback and as, as quickly through as we can. Now, on, on the other side now, you know, I'm, you know, I'm always asked this question. Are we, are we looking at these crazy salaries like we were before where we're like 500,000 to <laughs> No, and... Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, you know, I want to get myself in trouble to go, uh, you know, uh, a ton into it. I mean, again, it, it's a range, um, you know, okay. s- standard kind of uh, what you'd expect kind of industry rates um, for the majority of our positions. Um, but, you know, I know we've had this conversation before on the mm-hmm. blockchain side. Um, you know, very talented people in a very niche market sometimes do uh, get very mm-hmm. high salaries. But again, you know, a company as a whole, you think of every single person that goes into that. Um, so, you know, usually kind of industry standards in there as well. Um, it's, you know, typical, I guess, what you'd expect. Correct. Um, benefits wise, what's uh, what do you have for benefits? Uh, if you can talk to it, like, is it a, you know, do you get a 401k? Are y'all large enough to have a 401k? Yeah, so it's a, a bit tricky. So the, the way we do it is we essentially uh, onboard um, all the team members as uh, 1099 contractors. So you know, the idea is every single person uh, at the company is, you know, full time, you're 40 hours a week, you're, you know, standard what it would be anywhere else. Um, but in terms of the, the contract structuring, it is on a 1099 as opposed to a W-2. Um, so so one of the differences with things like perks um, is we are unable to do uh, like, you know, insurance benefits in that sense. So, you know, medical, dental, you know, you're unable to offer on more of a contractor setup. Uh, of course, you know, when we are, you know, having offers and things like that, those are things that we take into account, you know, what is that cost difference uh, for someone that's going to be joining with the company. Um, but again, we, you know, we do standard perks in the sense of, you know, you have your paid time off, uh, I believe, you know, about 21 days of, of vacation time um, uh, for, you know, with that and holiday sick leaves, I believe it's like 30 or so total, um, pretty standard, you know, working uh, tech budget, uh, you know, personal development budgets, things of that nature that we do as well. Um, similar to what you'd see uh, with with just about any other role. Uh, I do think the the thing for you know those of you coming from more of a, a web two background or you know a fintech type of space um, in in kind of our industry, it is a little bit more common to pay with uh, stable coins. So we we you know pay salaries in USDC, um, which you know I know for people that aren't as familiar is a bit different. Um, you know as opposed to getting a direct deposit, you're getting it uh, you know directly into your crypto wallet. So. Um, I do think that is probably the biggest change up uh, myself coming from, you know, a W2 job, even though it was in the industry, it was a bit of a change. But, you know, I, I think it's something that people get used to fairly quickly on our end as well. Yeah. So what it sounds like to me, you probably need to get you a financial advisor and then probably get you a um, um, uh, a a place to put your money because you're 1099 um, and actually probably buy assets off off of that um that's yeah no and, and again there's there's different ways to do it um you know, depending on kind of what your goals are if that makes sense so uh you know it gives people the option to essentially go uh corp to corp as a contract so they can you know form their own llc you know they're getting different uh you know tax write-offs or whatever it might be um again things that you you have to consult a, a tax advisor or a tax expert on mm-hmm. um, but it does kind of free you up a bit just in terms of how you structure things on your end um, it, it is also something too where getting paid in, in a, you know, even though it's a stable coin, it's, you know, equal to $1 is a little bit different just in terms of, you know, what that looks like. Uh, the 1099 contract, again, um, you know, a little bit differently in terms of how you, you fill out your taxes uh, at the end of the year. So, you know, definitely things to consider in that sense. Um, so, you know, I, I'd recommend, uh, again, talking to, you know, either a tax advisor or something like that if, if you're considering it. Um, not just for us, but as we've seen kind of more and more companies move into this crypto space um, with things like, you know, uh, token payments, even at a standard W-2 job, that's kind of the the type of inst- rather than equity, you're getting token for for some of these companies. So, you know, definitely things to think about. Um, again, good options to have at the end of the day, your, your tax advisors are uh, usually be pretty helpful, you know, kind of points of contact on on those things there. Correct. It, now, is there a an ability to bonus and also do like maybe more research, right? Um, and offer up some, you know, I guess some other incentives. Is that is that possible? Uh, in, in terms of like performance bonuses or like things it of that nature. It could be performance bonuses. It could be you writing a white paper uh about something you want to go off and do and present it back to the company that could be a possible uh way to leverage uh the company having more income coming in or looking yeah no something. again it, it will vary a bit um you know certainly uh for for different positions higher up or you, know, you think of like a business development teams or yeah, uh, you know so, something that would have some type of a performance bonus typically um that you'd think of 
um, you know, we do have those kind of standard throughout as well. Um, with things like, you know, white papers, things of that nature don't typically have, uh, you know, bonuses associated. Um, we do have kind of a, a separate marketing uh, department with different content writers that will go through, uh, you know, creating some of those documents, that documentation, working with uh, some of the engineering leads. So um, again, a little bit different just from, from position to position. Um, and as always, you know, at any company, seniority will, you know, ultimately kind of affect that as well. Got you. Now I'm going to turn it back over to you and I'm going to open it up. Um, if you don't have anything else to anybody else who may have questions, if you're concerned, I mean, the floor is yours, uh, y'all. So this is your chance to ask questions uh, if you got any, if you have any. So I'm going to turn it back over to you, Joe. Anybody else? Yeah, no, of course. I mean, yeah, ha happy to answer anything. Um, you know, I guess how many, how many people here have, uh, you know, played around with whether it's crypto blockchain as like a you know developer or like you know i guess have any kind of interest in that space i know we got i know i know we had some rust people in here because i know evelyn was has been at the rust meetings uh i'm not sure who's all been developing uh blockchain or following along with what's the latest and greatest but i let people speak for themselves uh if anything guys i mean it's a comment in the comment section you see Hey, Joe, this is Russ. Um, I've been following, um, I've invested in crypto, um, made some money and, and lost <laughs> lost yeah. some, quite a bit, a large sum. Um, and I've been following the blockchain because I've, <clears throat> I've heard like uh, great things about the possibilities, um, such as putting contracts on the ch blockchain and um, being able to uh, do certain transactions in basically a blink of an eye that normally would take traditional uh, institutions days to complete. So it's it's you know glad to have you. It's very interesting, and yeah, I I love um, love that love that you're here and, and informing us. Yeah, no, of course, I, I appreciate it. And, and again, I know uh, there's, you know, sometimes it's hard, I think, to really learn about the space for people where, uh, you know, myself, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, I'm on, you know, all these different avenues of social media. And you hear sometimes very contrasting things about, you know, about crypto or, you know, it, it sometimes becomes where people are trying to, you know, like almost give give people investment advice. And, and again, I'm, you know, not a financial advisor, nothing like that. Um, but sometimes people, you know, Bitcoin is going to go to 100,000, this technology. But, you know, once you hear kind of the reasoning, it, it sometimes is confusing. Um, I, I think it does open up a lot of possibilities. But I, I think one of the kind of more common misconceptions is, you know, blockchain is set out to solve kind of this this new problem that doesn't exist. You know, it, we're, we're creating something. Um, and I think the reality is, you know, look at any any technology, right? So, you know, look at like your, uh, you know, your ZH or ZSH shell that, you, you know, you use when you pull up your your operating system on a, on a MacBook. Um, you know, it's really just, you know, uh, another product that they've wrapped, you know, it's bash programming that they've now wrapped into a, a, a new tool in a sense, um, similar to kind of what blockchain is, right? So, you know, everything is, is ones and zeros, as, you know, people like to say at the end of the day, it all kind of goes back to this, uh, you know, same code. It's nothing like, you know, alien, it's, you know, when you're a developer looking at it, it, you're going about coding just as you would in, you know, Python, JavaScript, whatever it might be. Um, but we're, what we're doing with, you know, the blockchain itself and essentially working on this uh, distributed ledger technology. Um, again, it's already a thing in, in Web and Web2, people are using it. Um, it's just a different way of, of completing those processes in a way where you can have essentially like a, a ledger that then can't be altered after the fact. So, you know, you can say, hey, you know, if this transaction, this block is completed on, on this chain, you know, I can I can trace from, you know, now point B all the way back to point A um, and have that type of, you know, structure in place where you're able to organize, you know, information blocks in, in that type of a, uh, a nature. Um, again, when you think of things like supply chain, um, a lot of potential use cases outside of just what people think of as, you know, crypto, NFTs, um, it, you know, it, it's, much bigger in the sense of the infrastructure, the architecture that allows some of these things to be possible with NFTs and crypto. 
um, can also be applied to you know very different areas of the market as well things that are uh, traditionally done with with web 2 technologies that a lot of people are familiar with so uh, definitely you know a lot of good stuff there as well um, but you know, I, I'd seen uh, one of the comments too in terms of resources. Um, if, and again, I'm I'm not affiliated with any of these; just just friends at, at different companies. Um, if you're on Twitter or Discord, uh, BuilderDAO is like a community of of developers and and people in the space. Um, really informative. A lot of people uh, on their different chat rooms that are very helpful to you know lend a hand and you know point people in the right direction. Um, I would definitely check out uh, things like Build Space or other builders programs that are going to be, you know, online free, uh, as well as uh, there's a million different tutorials from developer relations engineers that are going to be at a lot of companies in the industry. Um, depending on what your interests are, there's, you know, certainly different people I'd recommend following, but um, overall, probably a good place to start, uh, you know, checking out some of that stuff there. And then um, Evelyn was saying that she has uh, Python, JavaScript, and C Sharp, and would be interested in a junior or apprenticeship role. Um, I think yeah, no, may... of course. And and I mean, so the idea is we are, you know, early on. I think in terms of uh, potential internship programs and so forth, it's a lot of, you know, long term planning. I think on our end, realistically, um, you don't want to have you know, internships and bring bring people in that, that are, you know, ready to be mentored and, and to kind of grow their, their careers to that next level without making sure that you have the uh, proper structuring in place to facilitate that type of uh, development. Um, so still kind of laying out some of that groundwork and, and game plan over the next few months, next few quarters on our end. Uh, but it is something that we are, are hoping to do in the next year or so, uh, just depending on how things play out. Um, you know, certainly, you know, shoot me a message and, you know, definitely something I'm happy to chat with people on and you know, if it makes sense, uh, you know, when we're ready to go on our end, of course. Anybody else? Anybody quiet? Now, now, Joe, you, I might have missed it. I, are you a, are you considered a developer now or what's your role? No, no, no. So I, I do uh, title. So I'm our lead town acquisition and operation specialist, which a uh, very fancy title. Essentially, essentially I, I do a lot on the uh, town acquisition side. So, um, you know, long-term kind of growth planning um, for the company, what we're projecting headcounts to look like, which departments will really need help and, and we'll really focus on, um, as well as, you know, help some different kind of marketing initiatives on that HR kind of operation side. Um, so a bit of a mix, um, you know, previously had come from a very uh, strong kind of business development recruitment type of a background. So I uh, still kind of help out from time to time on some of those BD initiatives, but, um, but yeah, no more of kind of like an overall kind of HR generalist in a sense is kind of the way to put it. Thanks. Yeah, of course. Cool. All right. So Joe, you want to drop your, uh, contact info? Um, I yeah, know no, last, of course. last time we had spoke, we were talking about doing resume building. Yeah, no, and it is, so we, so something I would like to get to, um, again, I think last time we had spoke, I was trying to do, I think, a lot on my own outside of the uh, the workplace, just, you know, uh, debating if going kind of the nonprofit route with some of it made sense. Um, you know, I'm in a position at the company we're at to potentially put some different initiatives, things like that in place, um, as well as uh, kind of on the back end on my side, partnering with some different people uh, throughout kind of the blockchain world to you know, uh, eventually kind of put some of this stuff together. So um, definitely, you know, can't say a ton now, but, you know, it's something that, you know, we'd, we'd like to get to uh, as, as quick as we can, I guess, on my end. Yeah, I have to get you, we'll have to sit down and, and contact and get you in contact with uh, Eric Coffey. Um, he has his own um, blockchain. Um, well, he got his own token and, and whatnot. So we'll, I have to get you in contact with him. Yeah, no, I remember, I remember speaking, I've been forever since I, had a conversation with him, just like LinkedIn back and forth, but like yeah, ago, but yeah, yeah. And then, and then, too, the uh, the whole blockchain space with government contracting is something that um, I I you should be interested in because there's a lot of money there. Um, and when I say there's a lot of money there, they're looking for people to uh, come in and um, help with um, a lot of blockchain work, a lot of cryptography work as well, too. Um, and so some of those contracts just like they're just like, hey, we don't have that many people that are applying. So they're like, hey, you know, they're just like, hey, if you know somebody, 
we just give them the contract to to do the research right so that's just another way to another avenue to to uh i don't want to say line your pockets but another avenue of research that could help uh promote the company let's say it that way <laughs> let's say it that way are you frozen joe too if you was talking you was frozen oh can you, can you hear me now? But yeah, no, no, no. There, I mean, d definitely a lot of possibilities. Uh, you know, government work, I'm, I'm sure, uh, pays quite well. But, but yeah, no. And, and again, it's it's something I think just tech in general. There's so much opportunity out there uh, for different roles in this space. Um, you know, you look at a lot of these companies that seem like they come out of nowhere, and you know, within two three years, have built up you know quite a large following. Uh, so you know, not surprised to see uh, at all. Great. All right, Joe, we appreciate you. I don't think there are more questions for you. Um, I got one. I got one. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I stand, I stand accused. Oh. <laughs> Let me get on screen with you so you ain't going right. <laughs> But, Joe, what would you say is, like, the uh, the best, uh, you know, the best, the pros and the cons, you know, working uh, at, at, at your company right now? Like, what's the, you know, the best aspects and what would you describe being like, you know, the worst or something that you don't necessarily like. Yeah, much. no, and, you know, I, I'll be brutally honest on it. Uh, you know, and I'll start, I'll start with the negatives first. And, and it is something that I think this is going to be seen in, in you know, startups across the board. Um, you know, we're fairly large, you know, 85 plus people, um, you know, very well funded. You know, our Series A five, six months ago brought an additional, uh, I want to say it was like 32 million or so off that, you know, projecting Series B sometime uh, in the next year or two. Um, so, again, very stable, but very much kind of a, a startup in the sense of, you know, we have products launching, we have strict deadlines. Um, it's a very fast paced industry as a whole. Um, and then also, you know, there's a lot of different uh, external factors in regards to, you know, financial regulations around the world. Um, we're working with a, a product suite, you know, a line of products that is used by, you know, people everywhere with access to the internet, essentially. So um, making sure you're, you're taking that all into account while meeting these uh, deadlines um, it is sometimes challenging. It's, it's you know, sometimes, uh, you know, long days, a lot of work. Um, so I think that is, uh, you know, not not unique to us, but, it, you know, it's definitely something to kind of consider. Um, but it is, you know, uh, rewarding too. And you, you see some of these things being built and, uh, you know, technologies being made that are you know, really kind of uh, game changing long term for the industry. Um, so, you know, cool in that sense. Um, you know, I guess more in terms of positives, it, it's, you know, it, it's almost like, it's, it's hard to say like, so, you know, for different people, it's different things, what you find attractive at a company. Um, some people it's like, you know, Hey, you know, you have a decent amount of vacation time. You can use it whenever you're, you're completely remote. You don't have to come into the office. Um, so different people, it's different things. Um, myself, I think, you know, I, I, what I really liked about the company when I'd first come on was just this like very fun culture where, you know, you get that in tech, you get, you know, a, a bunch of, you know, young people, you get, you know, older people, you get people from all these different diverse backgrounds, cultures, you know, all over the world kind of coming together. But then, you know, you're still in the same Slack or, you know, teams meeting and people are still making the same jokes, sending the same memes. Like, um, so, you know, it was, it was very just kind of like a, you know, welcoming space uh, with, you know, it, kind of unique, you know, you get all these different people all coming together with just kind of very common goals. So um, for, for myself, someone that's, you know, kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking on Twitter at, at other companies following different projects 24 seven. So, you know, to have a team that's, you know, similar mindset, I think was, was cool to, to have uh, when I started. Natasha, did that satisfy you? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, so uh, I know James is up. Is there anything else, Joe? Because I, I know me and you are gonna talk offline. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no worries. I mean, yeah, I've I've talked a ton, James. Hop, hop in, uh, of course. All right, so uh, so James, uh, I met James. Actually, James hit me up on uh, on 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 uh, uh, in the Blessing Technology uh slack group uh which is having a conference this week so there's two conferences i'm supposed to be at this week uh blacks and technology and which is in orlando and then uh cubecon which is in detroit so some some somebody didn't make it to either one of them right now um uh, that was out of my hands but uh james did hit me up uh to uh, talk about some jobs over at salesforce 
Um, I can give you my background on what I, um, my interview process at Salesforce, but I won't taint your picture, James. That'd be nice. <laughs> I, I would love to hear about your experience just because it's, it's different from everybody. <laughs> For everybody, and I will say, like, I'm I'm on the opposite side of Joe, where it's like, it's definitely not a small company anymore. Oh no, my, um, by no by no means. Dreamforce is yeah. huge. Takes uh, over the I mean, whole. At this point, Salesforce is officially over eighty five thousand employees. Right, it takes over a lot of people. So, most of that is is via acquisition. And that's how mm -hmm. I ended up at Salesforce. I actually started out, uh, you know, my career going around, but uh, spent most of that time, like maybe five years with Tableau. Uh, okay. After about five years at Tableau, Salesforce came along and acquired Tableau. I saw that as, as an opportunity to transfer internally, uh, kind of up my game, join the uh, Joined the the leadership group, so uh, mm -hmm. now a manager there, and the positions that I I went to uh, to make about are actually roles that I have. So I'm looking to hire people and grow people and look out for people. So you would be working for me. Um, All right. So those are the primary positions that that I'm looking to fill. Um, I actually met Tamika probably like, I don't know, it was forever ago. Yeah, yeah. it's been a minute. Cooper, KubeCon yep. in Seattle. Yeah, like, that was like, 20, <laughs> 2018, 2019, 2019, maybe. 2019. But, uh, but you it was were before, super- it was before COVID, so yeah, it's gotta be 2018, 2019. Yeah, so. Uh, super impressive. You had one of your friends with you from, from Women in Linux. It was great Indeed. to meet you and talk to you. Great to keep this connection. Uh, yep. Won't lie, part of what inspired me to get into leadership is, is meeting you. And uh, thank you. Then, and like, you know, there's a road out there. You know, you just got to put your head down and, and come up. Um, yep. So now with these positions, what I'm looking for are. Um, Developer productivity uh, and uh, SRE. So these positions are, are along the lines of, you know, what you expect for DevOps folks. Um, the things that we have in place uh, is lots of Terraform, lots of AWS. Say that. Um, say that again. What was that first word? <laughs> lots, of, lots of who? Terraform. Uh huh. <laughs> And what a, a cloud? Any pick a cloud? Any cloud? AWS, a lot yeah. of it, yeah. because Salesforce happens to be an AWS partner and one of their largest partners, which you can imagine. Yeah, eighty-five thousand people, um, approximately what thirty-five thousand of those is developers. There's there's mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of inroads, um, but. I am actually on the Quip side of the house. I moved there when I, like I was telling the story earlier, I moved to internally and I was like, man, I've been with Tableau forever. We're like a 3000 person company. I want to move to a smaller piece. Quip was about uh, 300 people. And so good, it? Ooh, it felt so good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I moved into that as a leader, so I could actually see the very, very top. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, speak with those people. Like I'd, I'd exchange Slack messages with uh, the the CTO on a fairly regular basis. But I would even do that at, at Tableau, just because I'd started it a long time ago with him. But uh, it was a great place to be. It still is a great place to be because um, Quip is integrating with with Slack. And one of the things that's going on there is, is Slack is trying to increase their foothold. You were talking about the future. And one of the things that they're working on is the future of work. They know that remote employment is going to be the norm. There are lots of people that are like, man, we got to get back to the office. And we appreciate those efforts. But lots of folks are just not going to go back to the office. It's, not when they don't have to. Yeah, you can't put that genie back in the bottle. 
And one of the things that uh, even Salesforce realizes as a company is great to have this big, beautiful building, but that big, beautiful building is expensive. It and is. it's a lot cheaper to have someone who's working from home eating their own snacks, <laughs> using their own electricity and their own internet, and, and they're just paying the salary. Yep. So that's that's one of the things that Slack is trying to actually realize is that, hey, we have uh, a chat product. And mm -hmm. beyond the chat product, they do workflows and uh, automation. But one of the things that they're trying to add into it with Quip is a document product. Quip, you probably haven't heard of. Um, I like to, to compare it to um, the third property. And this is one of those things that Salesforce does well, is they find that company that's the third one. Um, like Tableau was like the third business intelligence product. Uh, the other two were uh, was uh, Oracle, like everybody knew Oracle's business intelligence. And when when y'all gonna, gonna buy Oracle? Uh, that's a good question. Mark Minio, the fifth founder, Oracle. former former Oracle. So I am I am yeah. intrigued by that question. It's, yep. Yep, because you gotta look at they already have a footprint in in, in in the data space. They already have data centers, they already have a, a, a back end for databases. It'll be an easy win. They're already doing uh, uh or they already have a footprint in, in the government space as well, too. Um, so that it's it's just an easy win for someone like a Salesforce to to buy or even a Google to buy them. Um, to play that, to, to be that role, to play that data role, right? And and be able to take that data and massage that data and get that data out and get data lakes in the whole nine. It's it's a, I'm I'm just waiting for someone to buy to buy Oracle. I mean, Larry is smart. Don't get me wrong, but Larry also understands the value that he, the footprint and the value that he has, right? In 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 that space. So I could easily see somebody like a Salesforce go ahead and buy them um, and, and then roll them over, or uh, even somebody like a Microsoft or Google. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect AWS to buy them. They no. don't need them. They've got their own core. Yeah. I, and I can't see Microsoft picking them up either because Microsoft has picked up their own uh, roadmap and Correct. direction with Azure. They're, they're not going to touch it. It's like that we bring bringing in a third party. It's almost impossible to integrate. Um, Google is also like they do things a little bit different in the cloud. They do. And they do. I can't see it, but I am intrigued to to hear what the future of uh, Oracle looks like because last I heard, they're still high. <laughs> They're still, they're still, they were well, laying off some of the cloud pieces, but I, I did an interview, got the job with, with Oracle, and Oracle was looking to, uh, their, Oracle was looking to, and still is, their play is Africa. Their really? play, their play is Africa. Um, this was probably about three, no, this is about three or four years ago. And so they, and if we followed them, their play was Africa. It still is, and it's, it is it is one of their one of their biggest things. And so I don't know. I, I did a report on this uh, probably a couple of months ago about the great pipeline that's the that's been built surrounding Africa and those data centers and so forth that's going into it and how far those pipelines are going into Africa. So that has been their play. Like you think about what that looks like, even if they, even if Oracle decided that they didn't want to be in the U.S. anymore, they can go repurpose themselves in Africa alone. Wow. Think about it that way. They could go repurpose themselves in Africa with blockchain, with data, with storage, with databases, hire locally, and still, still be just fine. No doubt. No doubt. Just look at it differently. 
So one of the things you want to talk about is the next 10 to 15 years. I told you what we're doing now. Quip, Quip fits in that third bracket. Um, basically, Google has their, their Google Docs. Microsoft has Office 365. Quip fits in that special place where it's like, hey, we, you're able to do documents and spreadsheets in this platform, but we don't belong to Microsoft or Google, which might be a competitor. And if you think about the companies that fit into that, like your Apples and your Amazons, that's a large play. And that's where, where we sit. Um, Slack wanted to uh, get a hold of us because, hey, this is a good play for them. Now they're not just a chat program. They're actually a document workspace as well. So. And when you say Quip, are you, are, are you spelling that Q-U-I-P? Q-U-I-P. And that was a horrible job that our folks in marketing did to allow a toothbrush to have higher page ranking. <laughs> gotcha. Because when I hear Quip, I'm, I immediately think about filling out a, a Quip for a uh, for a um, for the government for filling out your SF86 or something like that. It's a form. It's, it's called Equip. It's, it's the actual product. It's called Equip. So when, when you said Quip, I was like, mm, I know one Quip, but I know that's not what you mean. But that's exactly what came to my mind. Exactly. We have horrible, horrible marketing. But uh, then again, they only wanted to sell us under the Salesforce umbrella for the most part. But we are hiring. I will make sure to throw the the jobs into uh, into the chat here. Um, and remember, I am the hiring manager, so um, I'm definitely looking for folks. Uh, so, so when you say when you say you are the hiring manager, give give some context to what that means. What does that actually mean? Uh, that means that I am the one with these job recs open. Um, I'm the manager that's looking for the people that will be working. Uh, and reporting to me. Um, I'm the one that's actually setting the roadmap, and I'm also the one that will be working on hiring and promoting the people that come into this. And I've said this before, I'll say it again, I'm looking for people that I can bring in, help, and grow. And that's what I told Tamika when I reached out. I was like, hey, I'm looking for folks that I can help bring in and grow. Um, uh, and and being very terse, I don't see a lot of me, and I'm trying to get more of that. Right. Now, with that being said, are these uh, jobs that you have all remote, or do you need to be there like once a month? Or They are absolutely remote. Um, we do uh, do on-sites uh, quarterly. Uh, so, uh, I mean, if you wanted to get together and and meet the crew out in San Francisco it is usually an all expensive paid trip for you uh, to, to come and pay us a visit. Uh, I know lots of your crowds over in, in uh, Florida. So uh, yeah, definitely get that cross country trip. Uh, come, come stay, get paid and, and enjoy your stay in California for usually a week and, and stay, yeah, enjoy it. Uh, it's it's an opportunity for growth for some people that are looking for it, and mm. those who are looking for inroads to tech. Uh, right. that's, that's what I'm here for. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm I'm reaching back. That's good. And now I know uh, my my time at Salesforce when I came when I came out, everybody was nice. You all at that time were still um, you are in a hybrid space. So I end up interviewing for I end up interviewing for uh, SRE DevOps role because the the person they wanted to have in the space needed to know how to build a box in the data center and connect it up and also work the cloud and also at the same time work with the customers which were internal to Salesforce. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I I end up interviewing for that um, for that particular position, and they wanted me to be in San Francisco, and I was like, where in the world do I live in San Francisco, and how much are you gonna pay me? Right. I learned the hard way that moving <laughs> to the Bay Area 
was required more pay. Oh, to get. It sounds it sound good. It sound good, right? Mm -hmm. And then you get out there and you start looking at apartments or houses or rooms or shacks or mm -hmm. van life. <laughs> fun fact, I actually work out of Seattle area. So um, speaking of uh, about you know whether or not I, I need to go into the office or not, I go for those quarterly meetings and that is it. So uh, and, you would just join and, me and work remote. Indeed, the other person that was with me is from San Francisco, so I'm gonna always give it a hard time. Uh, the tenderloin <laughs> and all of that, I'm gonna always give it a hard time. <laughs> the TL as she like to say. <laughs> but yes uh so yeah so the sre role is that sre role a junior a mid-level or senior position it is a staff level sre role uh okay. I, I would i wish i had some, some more dynamics in our sre uh SR. but like right now it's one of those things where it's like we're transitioning into another company that has a number of, of sres already um but i get to manage both teams but we really need that staff sre because we're going to be uh, uh actually integrating multiple aws accounts uh and multiple gpcs multiple groups of, of ips so it's going to be pretty messy for a while. Sound like you doing some land, some landing zones and so forth, and maybe some, uh, some. I, I will hope y'all doing some direct connect to get those boxes that y'all had in the on-prem data center up to the cloud. But that may, hey, that may not be there no more. At the, it, at this, I don't know. It is. It, it is almost a hundred percent cloud right now. Oh, I don't okay. think we even have any on-prem at this point. So yeah. it's it's pretty deep. <laughs> yep. Um, so now on the SRE side, um, are, what programming languages are you expecting or you don't care? Um, I would love to have some Go, okay. Python, but if you are well versed in how to do cloud formation and AWS, you're probably pretty golden. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I would want somebody capable of doing automation, don't care about the language. Go. Python, if you're running a third language like uh, PHP Rust. or Hack or Rust, I'm golden with that. Uh, I think if you know one language, you can learn another. You can learn another. It's just taking that same knowledge and, and trans, translating it. She only came on here because I mentioned something about the TL in San Francisco. That's the only reason why she came. <laughs> I came to greet our guest. Hey, Joe. Hey, James. How you guys doing? I'm good. How are you How doing? Are you? Yeah. And to give to me, get the snake eye. <laughs> oh, is that what's wow? Is that yeah. it's like that? It's like it's like that. It's like that. It is so like that. You can't you can't say nothing bad about San Francisco. Yes, like, you can. It's, it's a grimy town. It's not the same place that I was raised in. It's really, really grimy, but still, I'm the only person who can talk about it. <laughs> I'd take still. the weather uh, as opposed to New York right now. It's been like, I was today it wasn't bad. But it, it, yeah, I, I, I was out there a few months back visiting uh, was like some old college roommates all from the West Coast. We, we my, my first time in California, so I summers there had to have been fun. <laughs> my cousin, always she and she was just like, why is it so hot here? She was like, she didn't go to the beach or anything. I was like, you want to go to the beach? She's like, it's too hot. Like, leave me alone. My life. I always pick on people from San Francisco and go, nobody really lives in San Francisco. <laughs> well, you know, and you're, and you're right. And it's just like here in the Tampa Bay area, like everybody is a transplant. So when you see people that are born and raised there, you're just like, Really? <laughs> yeah, that's the way it is in Atlanta as well, too. Um, most people are transplants, but they've been transplants for a while, since 96. So, you know, that's, it is what it is. So after us. a while, it becomes home. <laughs> yep. 
Now on your um on your on your uh on your SRE uh I know you mentioned AWS Terraform a programming language. What about understanding agile, uh Kanban, any value stream mapping, anything around that? I wouldn't push for that. Largely okay. because there's some flexibility and transformation going on with merging companies. Agile is always changing. <laughs> my, so basically, y'all got a Kanban board and just pull this stuff off and do it. You know it. It's like, hey, <laughs> be, be, be agile is the request, not the process. Um, <laughs> What, right. what we go through is, is um, uh, we are we use an OKR system, you know, so it's okay. it's uh, a good amount of quarterly planning, and then just meet these these competitive goals. Um, and the reason I said we don't worry about it too much is, like I said, at this point I've worked at three companies inside of Salesforce. Uh, mm -hmm. Tableau was very strict agile. We had our our biweekly sprints. Uh, mm -hmm. burn downs and and like hey you're gonna do your daily stand up or you're gonna die kind of kind of set up but um inside equip it's a lot looser inside of slack it's it's okrs and other organizations are are all over the map with the same um i do like the idea that i get to decide what my team is gonna do and right now i can be kind of light because of the size of the team as we grow I need more structure, uh, and I would prefer Kanban. You know, I'm, I'm willing to be talked out of that by my team, but uh, Kanban seems to work a lot better because you you can handle disruptions better. And if you're now, on an I, SRE and Def Broad team, you're going to get those interruptions. Now, I didn't ask Joe this, which brains comes to mind, and I'm a, this, so this question goes to for both of y'all actually. Joe, mm -hmm. what? what's the what's the normal size of the teams that you're that you're seeing is it five ten two three what what are you, what are you normally seeing? yeah no and i i imagine uh probably different than salesforce but we, i mean the way it's broken down is uh the engineering department will have different uh subsections that are going to focus on different things um obviously you know there's there's legal there's compliance teams that'll have you know anywhere from uh, smaller departments, you know, two, two to, to five, kind of a range just across the board. Um, marketing on our end, you know, a bit larger of a department. Um, I'd say, you know, 15 plus uh, on that overall team. And then, you know, specific groups with, you know, a group of uh, two, three content writers, two, three graphic designers. So, you know, kind of uh, standard there. Um, for the engineering teams, um, again, a bit different. Um, SRE is something where uh, we have our head uh, of SRE, uh, Brett. Um, came uh, on board with us uh, about a month or two ago. Um, and then we have, uh, I wanna say currently four uh, SREs, in, including an intern that's that's helping out on that team currently. Um, larger security team that has another, you know, three or so people on kind of each of those individual subsets, uh, you know, on, under that hierarchy. Um, larger development teams will be anywhere from like five to seven. Um, and then, you know, different teams will all kind of come together. We use a product line management. so. Uh, our product owners sit on, on the product side and then we'll uh, essentially pick and, and play from uh, the engineering team, be able to bring in people for you know, front end, back end, DevOps, whatever it might be to you know help facilitate and take care of some of those projects. So uh, varies, I guess, is the way to, to put it there on, on my end. Got you. I mean, and, and it's, I figured that, but I just wasn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't ask that question. When, I didn't think about it at the time because I'm always a fan of smaller teams versus a team of, 30 people or something like that like or or is the team is so big you get pigeonholed into doing one thing where all you do is focus on storage and you never look outside of storage right you don't you don't do anything else right so you end up getting pigeonholed with your skill set so that's why i was more so wondering about the teams so i'm turning it over to you james like what's What's your team size and what now? And are you looking to grow that team past like 50 people, 100 people or something? One of the things that I've learned in, in just my short time in management is to define your team uh, pretty hand wavy. And that is uh, I like pizza box size teams. So large enough to feed a pizza. 
And sometimes you have some people that eat more than others. And that's when you tell other leadership that I need more people. Uh, we, we don't have enough to, to feed pizza, right? Um, but uh, to be more specific to your question, like I don't think any manager who's doing their, their best and actually meeting as regular as they should with their folks are doing well if they have more than eight people because that's more people than you can see a week and, and actually plan out your, your day, meet with those people and drive any interrupt issues. So um, right now my teams are at like, uh, what, four and three. So I, I have some, some headroom and that's why I'm hiring. Got you. All right, so now the next question, and this is for both of you all as well too, what does and i'll start with you james and then we'll go to you uh after this joe so what does what does um what does growth look like i know you mentioned growth and i heard joe you mentioned growth as well too but what does that really look like is that is that i come to work i sit there for a year or two you give me a review you say you're doing awesome and you give me this four percent cost of living raise that's inflation is higher and then you say, "Hey, you can improve on this, and then um, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot you this this information for you to go sign up for this class, and then within three years or two and a half, then you move up. Like, what does what's let's let's talk reality, right? Because we all we've all worked, we all seen these things. What is what's what's the what's a realistic goal? Is realistic goal for moving up six months, a year?" or is it a year, year and a half? Like, what's a realistic? Realistic is hard because realistic depends on where you are, right? Like, exactly. I can't make you a, a senior staff engineer if you're doing senior engineer level work, right? Or junior engineer level work. Correct. So the thing is to have a, a early and often conversation. This gets to why you can't have more than eight people is you need to have a conversation, not just about the work that people are doing, but you need to have conversation about the work people are doing, the lives that those people are living, because you know I can't expect you to do good work if you feel like you can't pay the bills. And you also need to talk about career direction. Um, and lots of people you know, aren't very good at that. So that's one of the things that I'm trying to get better at drawing out. Everybody wants to move a direction, but it's trying to figure out what that direction is. Um, and I think that's a key uh, piece of retention as well. Everybody loves money, but money is probably not gonna be the thing that drives your happiness. Because if it was, I'd probably be at Amazon. So, I mean, just be a real. I think you would have left after about a year and a half. <laughs> But that that that's really my thoughts is is it's about having those conversations, figuring out where people are. And I think you can probably get to any position that you want to get to that's uh, one level up in three or under years. If even if you're under, even if you're underwater, I think you can get to the next level in, in three years. OK. And um, I know you said staff was your SRE. What's the next level after staff for the SRE? It is senior staff. Okay, okay, senior, senior, is staff and then senior staff or is just senior staff, staff? Staff, senior staff, and then principal. Okay, okay. All right, so you got some 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 headway there in order to move. Now, uh, I'm going to turn this over to Joe, but before I turn it over to Joe, I want you to be thinking about mentorship. What does that mean? What does that look like in the company? Um, what does it look like for you to mentor people? But Joe, you asked a, answered a question on um, moving up. Like, what does that look like? What 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 does that look like from from your perspective? Yeah, you know, honestly, I think James really did a great job of, of you know highlighting the important parts where uh, it's case by case, right? Like, you know, you can only move someone up if they are you know the work is there, they're ready for for that kind of uh, next step. Um, so again, I, I think a realistic time frame. Um, similar to what James said, you know, two to three years is, you know, I think if you're you're there for that amount of time, putting in the work, you know, within that that type of a frame, I, you know, very possible, likely that people would be, you know, seeing those type of increases. Um, on our end, very similar. So, 
uh, we, we implement uh, different career development plans for every different position within the company. Um, it's something where it corresponds to, uh, you know, our salary banding, our, uh, you know, seniority levels without the company, pretty standard what you'd see. Um, and it's something where, you know, at each level throughout that, there are different kind of expectation, different uh, soft skills, different KPIs that, that people are kind of expected at each of these levels. And it's something where we do, uh, you know, similar to, you know, what it seems like it's done at Salesforce and uh, for a lot of places, very regular check-ins. So, you know, with HR, with individual team leads, um, with whomever it makes sense to have those conversations where um, we can get, you know, how are things going? Are you overwhelmed? Like making sure that that day-to-day -day is going well, but then, you know, as these, you know, performance goals are being reached and met and satisfied, um, that when we do have our, whether it's quarterly or, uh, you know, yearly performance reviews, um, that, you know, we have that information collected and, and then can um, make proper decisions at that, that time in, in terms of growth. Um, I will say, I think one of the unique opportunities within the, the blockchain space that um, might not be as common in Web2 is a lot of uh, cross-collaboration, um, not just, you know, within the company, but abroad. Uh, a lot of developers where, you know, they're working on personal projects as well as, you know, their standard nine to five. And um, in terms of growth, it, it, it opens up a, a few different possibilities. Obviously, you know, it, it's more work. People are, are doing things in their free time. Uh, but for example, you know, a company like ours, you're building a blockchain, you're building, you know, infrastructure that people can come in with their own ideas, their own, you know, uh, game plan for a company, whatever that might be, and, you know, develop that on, on their own time. So, um, it, you know, teaching them, you know, here's what you can do to kind of master your, your craft where you're currently at. Um, let's say, you know, your goal is to, you know, be a you know, CTO, a, a lead on one of these teams, move up, um, again, allowing those things to be in place so that people, uh, you know, we can kind of foster that, that growth and support them through it as well. Oh, I, I often hear like, and I've been, I've been studying in this for, for five years now, um, the whole CTO realm, right? Um, it's never a really clear path to get there unless you start your own business, right? Or, or you come into a space such as Web3 and you create your own coin and then move into a space where you can say, okay, hey, we're, we got this out here. So, you know, like it, it has to be like a small enough company. Let me say that, let me say it that way, where you can come in and, if, and, and influence and affect change. But usually the CTO doesn't really start to develop. And this is just me in the startup world until the person who, who, who the people who started, they started this company with, they have the real deep technical knowledge on what they need to do, but they don't understand infrastructure, right? They don't under, they understand how to program, but they don't understand infrastructure. They don't understand compliance. They don't understand uh, the the day to day that goes with um, uh, meeting this mark for a customer. They don't they don't have that piece. So they're more like the software CTO per se, but then there's the person who's that evangelist that's going to go out to the conferences. And that's where you see these developer advocates come into play and they go talk. But then there's also another person that's the developer advocate evangelist, uh, uh, understands hardware and software, but don't want to do none of that hardware software. They just want to go talk. They just want to do white papers and so forth. And I find this this I find that that role to be like you either love it and you love doing deep dives and talking about it and you're getting compensated well or you don't. <laughs> like that's that's what I have seen. Um, and and you all can speak to that. But the reason why I brought that up is because that's more of to me almost like um, almost falls into mentorship as well too. Because now you're able to speak uh, about the product, what the future is, what that looks like, but you're also able to, I don't want to say, I should say more like coach people into understanding what, what that next level is and what that product is and what, and so forth. That, that, that's, it's such a, uh, a unique position to be in because it's either you drink the Kool-Aid or you don't. 
because you got to sell, right? You you drinking the Kool-Aid. See, you're laughing at me, James, because you know I'm telling the truth. You know, you, you drink the Kool-Aid or you don't. So that's why I mentioned before I turned it over to Joe, which I'm going back to you, James, what does what does mentorship look like? Like, because there's mentorship and then there's sponsorship. But what does mentorship look like for you? Um, let's say away from Salesforce. Let's just say just you yourself. Like, what does that look like? Is that for me or Joe? On you, James. All right. So mentorship for for me is uh you know and I, I i appreciate you saying away from salesforce because i have a personal mentorship piece which is like hanging out with tamika in this group today uh, i do work with the uh, nsb uh locally it, it's about being out in public talking about here are some career paths um, and i look at my own career going the job that i started out in release engineering was not something that I knew it existed. So mentorship is about telling people what exists and how to actually get up to that next level. Um, and, and you mentioned sponsorship. The, the problem with mentorship is that I can tell you about the next level, but I don't know if you can get there without sponsorship, without exactly. somebody actually giving you that, that next level and you have an allies. So every time that I talk about, um, you know, every time I'm mentoring, um, I instruct people to look, look out for the people who are actually uh, there to sponsor you, people who are there that are allies, people that are there to support you. I won't say that you have enemies, that you have some people that are not there to actually push you forward. And you should spend your time on the folks that are pushing you forward so you can understand what that next level is. Because that's where you're gonna find those sponsors to push you up to the next next piece of the tree. Uh, in the, the CTO a, piece? <laughs> it's hard. I, I'll just leave it there. Just, it's not even worth talking about. And I think you ha in order to get there, you have to be there like super early or be a partner. Like uh, you can get VP level, like if you come come in from the side and have some people and partners. But I have never seen a CTO that didn't say, hey, I started this company. I decided I don't like running companies from a business standpoint. I, I like writing code and making decisions about that. I'm going to be the CTO of my business. And, and that happens often, especially if you look at all these businesses on, on Crunchbase. Mm -hmm. uh, don't look at who the CEO is. Look at who the CTO is. They mm -hmm. are a fellow founder. So, yep, yep. And that's usually how I, I've I've seen it work. But the reason why I, I bring that up is because uh, oftentimes I think uh, rising through the ranks gets lost as to like, okay, if I'm on the cloud side or the cloud security side. Where, where where's the top level do I level out at? And really, truth be told, the top level to me is when you're gonna make your own company. Um, I think when you start working for a place like Salesforce or X4 Technologies or Composable, is that right? Composable, Composable. When you start going to work at these places, you need to learn business. Like who do they talk to? Um, how do they how do they run their standups? Um, what does that Kanban board look like? How do they communicate with each other? I think uh, I think there's a valuable lesson that gets learned at working at companies, but I think you don't get a chance to implement them until you start your own business, and you find out really really quickly if you suck or not. <laughs> you find out real quick if you suck or not. Like if you if you don't if you are not very good at communication that's not your thing you find out really really quickly right so you have to put infrastructure and i want to use that term loosely there but you have to put that infrastructure in place to accommodate what you're trying to do and what you're trying to build if you know you're not good at something put something in place and i don't i don't think that gets talked about a lot and think somebody had a question here on as someone who's just starting out in tech what's the best job to pursue 
as a beginner tech in such a broad field? I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let the hiring manager and, and Joe take that. I'm gonna let Joe and James take that. Yeah, James, <laughs> feel free. Uh, I, I feel like it's such a hard one where it's like, you know, what are your interests kind of a thing? You know what I mean? Like where where's a good starting point is different based on what your end goals are. Um, I know we talk about CTO again, uh, positions like that, C suite, I feel like very much entrepreneurial in a sense where, you know, there are other skills opposed to just the, you know, uh, great technology people that, that end up in those levels for other reasons. Um, but again, you know, it's something where, you know, if your goal is to be, uh, you know, let's say like a DevOps lead on a team, that's like, you know, I want to, I want to lead this kind of really own this cloud space um, within a company. Uh, maybe taking more of a, a junior SRE, junior DevOps type role, even on the QA side as a potential starting point. Um, things like QA, I've seen people, uh, no tech background in, in undergrad, no tech grad in college, uh, take a boot camp. Um, you know, there's there's free, there's paid versions out there. Um, you know, none off the top of my head specifically that I'd recommend, but um, certainly things where you can go in, in a few weeks, month or two class, uh, structured online, um, be eligible for those entry level positions, something you're getting paid, you're getting your foot in the door. And um, again, comes down to kind of work uh, ethic from there. Um, I don't know, James, or your thoughts, but that's just my kind yeah, of that, that kind of aligns with my thoughts as well. Like, like going back to the mentorship thing, when people say, what should I do first? And I'll say, what do you enjoy doing? Because if you're like, I also like to correct, if you don't like doing technology, please don't do technology it will show it will show immediately so find the things that you enjoy and and jump into those pieces of technology that you enjoy um, and like think about a company the size of like salesforce or tableau uh, i recall we had somebody in property management for the company that made a nice salary i'll put it to you that way you don't have to be in you know that side the technology side of the house to actually do well as a matter of fact like hr compliance security like all of these roles are still technology roles because what you're doing is you're getting the benefit of the technology umbrella and that gives you inroads to a number of things that you might not have had uh, access to outside of that and once you get inside like Tamika was alluding to, you have visibility into things that you go, oh, this is a job? Well, I can leave here and become a contractor. I am no longer doing the job. I, I have a business that is getting me paid because I have other people that want to do the job. And and that's what I liked about Joe. <laughs> uh, Joe's uh, set up, right? Uh, but again, so uh, it's two two things. I'm gonna mention two things here. So uh, one of the first things was uh, uh, where do you start in tech? So really, um, anywhere is the answer, right? But the anywhere means that you need to define what it is that you want to do in tech. So like James was saying, you can come into the tech space and be a lawyer. You can come into the tech space and you can do compliance or cybersecurity and cybersecurity is very loose when i say that because there's cloud security there's application security there's physical security um you could be on on a team that's doing pen testing red team blue team purple team you can also even get into the space where you're not doing any of that where you're you you are working with recruiters to relocate people to other cities um you could be the person that is hey once you get um into the building we reach you we, we set you up um you're we are this liaison somebody got an echo i don't know who it is uh, but somebody got an echo but i mean there's 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 so many different uh uh roles that are in tech and like me and d say every company is a tech company kroger is a tech company kroger just bought Albertsons for what 34.1 billion or 46.1 billion dollars and so you got to think they're now going from uh i think it was i think they're moving up to 700,000 employees imagine having to corral 700,000 employees what type of system are they using what type of payroll are they using uh how do you make sure everybody stays healthy what incentives do you have like 
there's so many different things that are happening in that space. And that's just, we're just talking about grocery stores, right? And they're trying to compete with Costco and Walmart uh, in, in that space. So now you got to think about, well, it, what, what would happen if Walmart and Costco actually combined? Right? What would happen if Walmart and Costco? Look, look at look at Jane's face. What would happen if Walmart and Costco combined? Right? Uh, why play the game of of fighting each other when we can win together? Because as I know it, there's I don't know of a Costco uh, small grocery store. There's like no friendly Costco store. So it would behoove if I was Costco, I would be combining with Walmart. And like now you got a, a, a takeover and now you can influence internationally because I don't know if Costco is international and I, I don't know if I've, I've never heard anybody talk about Costco. International. So when you think about where you want to be in tech, sit back and write down um, the 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 what you like about tech, even if you just like playing on your iPad, you can go work at Apple. You don't have to work at Apple in the, in the Apple store, but you can go help influence uh apple from a ui perspective you can influence apple from a customer perspective there's just so many different things that uh they so many different ways to get in tech and i think it gets overlooked because everybody's like the first thing you hear is i'm i'm getting into tech and the two things i hear everybody say all the time i'm gonna be a coder and i'm going into cybersecurity. coding what rust python uh go C sharp, C plus plus, Perl. Like, wh what are you gonna do, right? It's, it's, it's. What are you actually gonna do? Did somebody say I'm going into a boot camp? And you're like, well, what boot camp is that? Oh, they're gonna teach me React, JavaScript, and and I'm gonna be a full stack developer. Oh, okay. Now, what you gonna do after you after you've done that? What's 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 gonna be your next goal? So you you, I'm I'm giving you, man. Do you have the chance now, right? If I were you, I would make sure that. I get Joe's information and James information and set up a one-on-one -on -one with them and say, hey, here's here's who I am, this is what I got, and uh let the chips fall where they may. You got you got a hiring manager right here and you got a recruiter. Don't let that, don't let that slip out of your hands, right? Don't let that slip out of your hands. Um, and then full 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 circle as far as like going back to the the, the whole 1099 uh, situation and why I like about Joe is um is the conversation that we have all the time on women in Linux is about making your money in tech and invest it elsewhere. Here's the here's the ability to make your money 1099 tax free set up your LLC and of course you're gonna pay your taxes, but now you can make that money, make money without having that issue of like, oh my goodness, I've maxed out my my 401k, my Roth 401k, because I can only uh, put in 20,005, I think it goes up to 225 next year. <laughs> go go ahead, Joe. So, so Salesforce is actually at the size where you can do the backdoor Roth and put in the extra 75K. So it, it, you can do some things and make some manipulations, but I do like the idea of 1099, but you have to be willing to manage that. Oh, or you got to find somebody willing to manage it for you. <laughs> All right, you gotta pay somebody for that, right? Yeah, no, it, it's cert it's certainly different. I mean, I think it, you know, uh, different things for different people, uh, but it is, you know, similar. Where, kind of like you said, it's uh, you know, you can you're setting up an entity that you know you're you're structuring kind of your your financial situation a little bit differently, um, you know, based on what you're making, you know, uh, with different contracts, um, you know, obviously that looks differently. It's something I would definitely recommend talking to you know tax advisor, financial advisor, just to see. Um, but yeah, it opens up a lot of possibilities uh, for what that looks like. And um, again, you know, you're working at a company, but you know, you're you're working for yourself in the sense of you know, you're your own brand when you're you're that LLC, even if it's you know, a single member or solo LLC. Um, again, separate stuff that goes into that aside from just the 1099 contract, but um, you know, opens up the door for those possibilities. Right. Now I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna leave the floor open for other people to come up and give 
whatever it is that you all want to ask um in and joe and james if there's if there's any other jobs or any other things that i might, might have missed please feel free to add i know james you mentioned uh sre um and what's one other thing that you mentioned yeah develop developer productivity or developer productivity. Tools. okay tools okay okay and tools based and i'm assuming based in a particular language you're creating tools in a particular language uh we're flexible, but Python's our primary. Uh, Go is our secondary. Uh, Got you. So if you're learning Python, uh, actually JS is also on the, on the menu. So. Got you. Got you. Oh, and you did have one other question here. Uh, what's the support like for learning and applying new tools? Yeah. Uh, That's for I'm us, in, we have 20% time. Uh, at hackathon time, just like most companies where it's like, hey, this is your time where you're supposed to learn. Um, and the reason I was a little bit hesitant on, on say languages is because everybody has tried a different language. <laughs> and and we're not afraid to throw a new language in the, in the crux, especially if it works for something that we want to do, especially on the tool side. You know, like there's, there's no fear there. Uh, so yeah, 20% time, work on what you wanna, learn what you wanna, um, be able to spend time with with uh, some other smart people and learn from them as well. Gotcha, Joe, anything there you wanna add there on tools, building tools, languages? Yeah, no, I I, again, it's it's different for, for different goals. Um, you know, our, our company, we, pretty, uh, you know, JavaScript for a lot, you know, front end, back end, uh, like, you know, React, Node, Vue, um, some of those uh, Java tools, uh, we do a lot, you know, in blockchain, it gets, it gets crazy with some of the different tech, uh, you know, we, Solidity, Rust, um, you know, you're working in different frameworks with, um, they call like truffle hard hats, more like, you know, Ethereum, Solidity, then there's uh, like Anchor, Substrate, where they're more used in, in Rust, um, it starts getting like Cosmwasm and um, some technologies that, that get uh, very niche kind of in there, but um, it's definitely something as starting points, I think a lot of people, you know, Python, JavaScripts, your, you know, uh, Bash, whatever it might be that, you know, people kind of start out on and, you know, gradually kind of move into text from there. Um, right. I, I will say too, the, the only other thing, and I'll, I'll put this in uh, the chat. So I, I put it on previously, our, uh, our job board, just so people can take a look um, on there for each of those. If you click through, we also have like a video, pretty short, but it just kind of goes over team culture. Um, very, I, th I think in, in a short amount of time, sometimes hard to explain kind of the entirety of, of what the company does. So, you know, people are interested, check, I'll throw that in the chat. And, and James, what does actually, what does Salesforce actually do? What will be a good definition for sales? What do you actually do? <laughs> that That is really difficult def to define because we like to say we do a little bit of everything. Um, well, I think the official line is we connect customers to, to companies. And, and basically what that means is if you have a customer and you want to develop a relationship and collect their data and have information about that customer, support that customer, and do internal sales, uh, internal customer support, uh, internal automation, all of that's like our, our daily way. Uh, that's how you end up with with a lot of people and a lot so, of different companies doing a lot of different things. So uh, I I went and looked looked you up here. Uh, this is Quip, right? This is this is you. Wait, I can't make that out. Can you zoom in a little bit? Yeah, that's the, me, that's the bash script, Tim. Oh, is it? Hold on, let me. Uh, uh, the, hey, man, you, you see, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, that's what's up. Oh no. All right. How about now? Is that yeah, there we go. Yeah, cool.com. Yep, yep. All right. This is you that's right up. here. Uh Quip helps uh sales team accelerate business in real time, reimagine sales process with embedded documents, uh live Salesforce data and built in collaboration. Right. Yep. All right, got you. And got you. Let's see if I can like share real quick yeah, you can share your screen hold on we'll get out like 
this is our product. So it, it really is like, hey, this, this is an alternative to, uh, say, Google Docs and Google Sheets if you wanted to do a spreadsheet. So uh, this is what we intend to, to integrate into, uh, into Slack. So they actually yeah. did a, a pretty decent demo of what it, what it is. And I think you were talking about the Cam Kanban board uh, mm -hmm. a little bit earlier. Correct. Uh, I think it's funny you mentioned that because the Kanban board is actually one of the uh, plugins that we we started fooling with. So some people actually use this for day to day business. But, uh, gotcha. Gotcha. That's all. Now, you had a, a, a question here. I'm going to go backwards. Uh, one is, that are, the, are you all hiring for tech sales? And I'm, I'm assuming that's for both both uh, companies. We're, we're always hiring for sales. Um, so, yeah, actually, reach out to me. I, I got a couple of friends in sales uh, that are managers in sales, and I'll, I'll try and get you connected. Like I said, I'm trying to help people move in, move up. Um, if I can support you in that way, just let me know. Got you, Joe. Yeah, no, so we, we do have those type of positions, uh, a little bit different, uh, more kind of BD focused stuff. Um, we, we do a lot of like integrations and stuff with, with larger companies and, and other kind of players in the space. Um, long term, a lot of goals for, for partnerships, more you, know, you think like HFTs, asset management type groups, a um, little bit different than uh, certain textiles, but similar. Um, at the moment, I don't think there is a ton of hiring on that front. Um, definitely something uh, quarter one, quarter two of next year would probably be ramping up again. Uh, definitely, you. you know, go to James if, if you're looking in, in the time being, of course, Salesforce uh, is huge. We're, we're a Slack company, so uh, I can see that. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, another one was, uh, do you all see uh, no code, no code disrupting the tech industry? I would say yes, but I'm a, a James. I know you see it. I'm not sure if you see that, Joe, but I'll, I'll let you all answer that question. Uh, yes, but in a different way than you're probably thinking. Um, I think it'll actually make uh, the need for developers higher. Uh, Salesforce is actually trying to develop its own low-code, no-code solution, and Slack also has scripting and in-chat no-code, low-code solutions, and Quip, that thing I just showed you, has some no-code, low-code solutions based on the spreadsheets. So the answer is, will it be disruptive? Yes, but only to, to add more space for, for me, more people. Like it, it, it'll bring about new languages that people will need to work work on, uh, but I don't think it'll replace any of that. Joe, do you have anything? So just kind of d disruption in, in general. Uh, I, I cut out on the first part of, of what you had said. Um, yeah, just disruption in general in the tech industry um, itself. I know you're on the blockchain side. Yeah, no, it, it's yes on my side, but it, it's it's really different just in terms of. Uh, there's a lot of very forward thinking teams in, in very niche markets where people are like, you know, we're going to just use a completely different tech stack or we're going to go about doing things a certain way and, and it just works and you, you have to adapt. Um, right now you're seeing that a lot with, uh, you know, ZK technologies. So uh, the zero knowledge developers, um, you know, a lot of cryptography, uh, like algorithmic programming. Um, so I, I guess as an example, um, you know, before there's, you know, some concerns for, for mass adoption for crypto when you think, you know, the SEC is going to, you know, hit me hard on taxes because I'm trading and, you know, how do I report all this? And, you know, where are these transactions coming from? Because, you know, it's, it's being done across the world. What jurisdiction does this fall in? Um, ZK is one of those things where, you know, came about pretty quickly in a, in a, in a way where it's a, a solution where we can, you know, batch a bunch of transactions together, essentially, um, and send them all at one time, you know, this batch roll up of transactions and then, you know, uh, taking into account security needs, taking into account um, jurisdiction. So where would that transaction fall, um, you know, under legal regulation? Um, so again, you're, you're, we're seeing things like that, but nothing crazy. It's I think more just because it's a, um, you know, a, a new industry in the sense of, you know, that there's a lot of kind of, a, you know, new ways about doing things and, and people kind of, you know, taking those steps. So um, 
but yeah, that's just kind of the way I, I see it on my end. Give it to you from my end. Um, it's this actually came out at uh, Hashi. I'll share my screen. It was actually something I brought up to Hashi uh, in 2018, 2019, where I mentioned to them, uh, I mentioned to Armand sitting at the table, I said, um, the need for people to write Terraform code and to uh, build infrastructure is going to go away from writing to just basic blocks, like going back to basic blocks. Um, and, and I was like, and that could be done because, because they, when they created Terraform Cloud, I, I mentioned this, you can get a common, you can get an idea of how many, of what type of infrastructure and, 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 what, and how people are building infrastructure and take that and use AI and come up with a model and say, hey, if you're a small company, you're more than likely going to need this technical stack to build we will go ahead and build that for you and you don't need to hire any infrastructure engineers you just need to hire platform engineers or sres to maintain it so when they made this announcement i laughed i giggled because i because he, he was like he was like yeah we'll do something like that but there's a company that actually got bought by um um another another company here uh i've had him i had him here on the show is uh i think it's called we fact R, um and I'm, i don't know why i can't find it right now but um anyway here right here on linkedin okay yeah it is right there so this company right here devops automation platform right um they got purchased by uh by sophos is who, who purchased them um, and basically what they allow you to do on, on Refact R, if you come here, which is now Sophos, uh, basically is, let me see if they got a video. If not, I, he has a video on YouTube, but you can see they've already been adopted by the, by the Air Force, by Platform One, by, the CIA, by CIS. But basically what they, what they, all they do is, is, is basically what you, what you see right, right here, right? If, if I want to, I want to build something like cloud security, application security, or infrastructure security. I'm just going to come in here into into this their their environment. I'm going to connect up with uh, via a plugin, and if I want to have GitHub in my environment, I'm just going to click on GitHub and drop and drag it into the environment. And then if I want to use GitLab or Terraform, I'm just going to drop and drag that in there. The need to understand how how things how things work and how they connect is still there, but now I'm visually building environments versus typing it out. And so that low code, no code, this is where that comes into play as well. Um, you're gonna start seeing that also come into play with um, not just automation, but security as well. Um, so it's a unique space. To, to be in, right? Um, people are hiring for lo no, no code, low code uh, manufacturing. We, you got to think about $100 billion is going into uh, manufacturing um, in, in upstate New York. Um, the need for people and, and the way we need people is different. Um, well, even when we look at EV and in the EV space with $50 billion in that space um, and, and, and supply, uh 10 billion is going into ohio the need of way how we have people and where we place people at is going to be different and what and your skill set like you may be and i and i'm and i'm imagining this you may be working on the factory line where you're just dropping and dragging cold blocks and then the machine goes off and do that does that work for you removing human error per se per se um because it's still but again if you put bumper guards if you put guards around it where you can't drop and drag this or this you only have this choice here to drop and drag that you that I, that's what i see um as as we go down assembly lines the need for people to use their hands number one uh copper tunnel two the the long standing three the deterioration of the body over time how can i figure out to ways to preserve the person's body 
how can I figure out ways to preserve that human being? Those things go away. Uh, I don't know if you're, and I, I was gonna bring this up on, on Saturday, but they even have uh, where now you don't even go out to uh, dig and excavate that you actually are doing this autonomously. You're actually sitting in like, if you ever did any simulation for airlines or, air, or, or airplanes or whatever, you're sitting in a simulator and you're controlling the simulator to dig up holes for you. You're not sitting in the actual excavator to dig up holes. You're just sitting there and you're at bulldozer and you're actually digging holes remotely. So now you think about that need for that just to be a man doing that. Now that need opens up to it could be a 19 year old girl. It could be a 21 year old man. It could be it could be any of those things because now all I have to do is train you how to use these things and we could put guards in place software wise in order to make sure that we don't hit that pipeline or we don't hit that gas line or what what have you i can i can now just take uh i can use a drone or i can use 3d imaging to take to take pictures and now i have that picture in front of me i'm sitting in i'm sitting in my house in in wherever right in, Lu in in St. Lucia, and I'm digging holes in in San Francisco, right? Like so, I I don't I don't need to be there to dig holes. I just drop. I just need I just need to get the actual uh, machine there to do the work. So how we how we even do construction changes, how we move changes. Those are my thoughts. That's what I'm seeing. So any any other questions anybody uh, we got 15 more minutes before we get out of here we can wrap up early if we need to um but i want to make sure everybody got their question in um i hope you all are connecting with james and joe on linkedin um james and joe please feel free to drop your information uh those that are looking to just even get mentorship and guidance and i mean we, we're talking about salesforce with 85,000 people already working. Uh, he's already mentioned jobs on remote. Um, there's that. You're looking to get blockchain. I'm, I am pretty sure that Salesforce is in the blockchain arena as well too. Um, so that's another end. Joe has, has his end um, as well. And I'm gonna leave the floor uh, over to you all for the, to drop your information um, and any other jobs or anything else you wanna say. Either or, it don't matter who goes first. James, want to hop in or? I was gonna say, yeah, I, I appreciate the invitation to make it. Uh, this is this has been awesome for me. Um, I've had a couple of private conversations, uh, so I'm definitely gonna get connected with a couple of folks, and this would be an awesome uh, opportunity for me, like I said, to to really follow that mission that I have to to help people come up and that's that's what i'm here for um and yeah i'm looking forward to, to all the connections and uh probably be back this is actually a enjoyable enjoyable discussion so, so uh thank you. thank you i mean james you don't have to be so humble over here we like to have fun yeah. over here. just say you want to get people into the tech space so they can do what ball so they can go get some money so they can go buy some property <laughs> hey I think I've gone on record as rec what being a representative of Salesforce. I'll wait till next time. To, to okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll, we won't record next time. We'll do women in Linux after dark. <laughs> but, but to quote some some people smarter than than myself, you have to start with something to get something. So. So it's about getting what you need so you can move on up to the next level. Correct. Joe, you got anything? I appreciate you, James. Uh, yeah, no, of course, I'll drop, uh, you know, contacts, my uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Telegram, um, however it's easier, and then the company site if people are interested. Uh, again, I, I do like this platform. I know, you know, Tamika and I, probably like a year ago, honestly, at this point, um, you know, it really does great work in terms of it, it's all about, it's not just about like, you know, getting jobs or like for me, you know, in the recruitment space, it's always like, oh, it's a recruiter, you know, trying to get people. But 
um, you know, really, it's cool to see people be able to learn, get into these spaces, you know, take their careers to the next level. And um, again, work aside, it's something I, I really kind of enjoy uh, helping kind of foster throughout the communities as well. So, you know, I'm glad that there's a space like this, you know, to, to help kind of put those things in action. It's super cool to be a part of. Yeah, and the other thing I wanted to add to, feel free to come back anytime. Like, if it's something that you all want to talk about or that you see coming down the pipe, feel free. We meet every Wednesday. We've been meeting every Wednesday. Uh, now going on six years. We've been doing this six years. Uh, then I know a lot of people don't think we have, but we've been we we've been at it for six years. Um, we recently started. Well, it's been two years now. We did our we got our YouTube channel where we talk about tech, where tech is going, what's the next ten to fifteen years like. I always tell people in my group, get skills that are going to last you the next ten to fifteen years. Like, don't go get onesie, twosie skills, get skills that you can morph and build a foundation off of where you can be in tech for the next 10 to 15 years. Imagine if you're in tech for the next 10 to 15 years and every year you're getting 200, 220, 230, 240, 250 over time, that adds up, right? Over time, that adds up, right? So you have to, again, you are a business. I tell you that all the time. You are a business, treat yourself as such. Um, you are the leader of your business. You are the CEO, CTO, VP of your business. So you got to figure out what skills do you need? How do you talk to people? How do you move in this industry? Because at the end of the day, it's your life. It's what it is. It's your life. And you got to figure out how you're going to make that work for you. Um, you know, it's no, the time is now. There's no need to standing around waiting for somebody that to, to, to guide you in. There's so many opportunities, way more than what it was when I started. Man, if I had opportunities that we that you all have right now, I'll be a billionaire. I'll be at everybody job. Nope. I'm working. I ain't going nowhere. Ain't there's no freak Nick. I'm I'm at work. <laughs> uh, but you you have you have um the world at your feet and you have the ability uh to 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 make that happen for you so i hope you all are uh, are getting people's information um i hope you are also studying and taking notes of what the skills the 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 skill sets that you need um the rust the go laying um and any of that nature in any of that uh information right um so you know, that's all I got. If anybody else in the chat has anything else, D, I don't know if you want to say us a, a farewell, good night. Um, but you know, this is this is cool for me. I'm letting y'all go 10 minutes early. You know how hard that is. Oh God, I know you are just dying over there, about to fall and slip out the chair. Freaking about to melt. Just, <laughs> just. Oh my God. But Joe, it definitely was a pleasure to have you back again. Congratulations on your new opportunity, James, to see your face again as well. Thank you so much in regards to Salesforce and their opportunities. I've actually been um, going to like some recruiting classes with Salesforce where they, you know, go over their re your resume. and Those have been a treat as well. Um, so to have you here and just talk about the different things that are going on at Salesforce, um, I know it's definitely exciting, especially, you know, we always talk about the, the, the small companies, but the big companies as well can be fun as well because they have, they're doing so many acquisitions and stuff. So um, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for coming out tonight. I know um, you guys were uh did a lot of Linux um, on Sunday. You guys had a, a study group on Sunday or Saturday? Sunday. Oh, Sunday. So um, we gave you a break tonight. Um, hopefully you guys were all prepared. Um, we gave you a break on Saturday. We gave ourselves a break you know, on Saturday. D, I can stay, you know, D, I can stay on after this and teach a whole nother two hours. You know, everybody can go and I can stay on and teach a whole nother two hours. I know you can get off, but you know, I'm ready. I got, I got my, I got my screens up and everything. You saw my, my SSH terminal was up. I'm ready. You must have been drinking soda. No, I've been drinking smart water because I'm smart. Oh. <laughs> All right. So that's my thoughts. Yeah, yeah. So cool. I appreciate you all. Um, so those that want to stick around, I'm I'm gonna close it out real quick. Cool, James, Joe, free to go. This that another. 
um everybody else and then you're free to stay if you want to to see what we're talking about so you get an idea of what we discuss right you're free to free to stay free to go uh and right now since i got i promise only got i'm gonna do it in two minutes natasha two minutes two minutes look look you see that you see the group the group is like my vms are up and running we ready you see that you see this is where we ready joe james you came to a good night we always ready to go and teach over here we're always ready to go. And Joe, you're in New York, right? Uh, yeah. No, so I'm I'm city myself. So. Okay. And James, you in San Francisco, right? No, he's in Seattle. Seattle. He's the West Coast. Oh, you're in Seattle. You're in Seattle. Seattle. You're on the West Coast. You're on the West Coast. So uh, I'll give y'all a rundown, uh, James, and and all. Let me know, uh, and then I won't hold you after this. I promise. I'll be nice. You know, I'll let y'all go. Let me get my my lucid chart up so we can so we so y'all can see what what we do on Wednesday nights uh, and, and what and what we go over. Right. Um, a lot of people come and they're like, oh, what is this class about? What do y'all actually do? What are you actually learning? So let me open up my lucid chart and then I'll share my screen here. So what do we do on 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 these nights? So I know it looks kind of convoluted right here. I hope that everybody can see this screen. It looks a little small. Let me blow it up some here. You said if yeah, hundred percent. So, so Joe, when you were talking about Terraform and James, not Terraform, but Russ, uh, James, you were talking about Terraform and cloud formation and so forth and so on. I actually worked on teaching people Linux as their foundation. And from that foundation, they build up um, to understanding DevOps, DevSecOps, SRE, and so forth, right? And with that being said, um, I've been taking people on their journey of dividing up into teams, understanding how to use JIRA, uh, the Kanban board, Confluence, uh, we've even, uh, started working with GitLab. Everyone has GitLab accounts. We're also working on, and tonight I was gonna actually work on building their own containers because they're learning how to build, um, they're actually learning how to build runners out uh, on GitLab. So uh, we went over this piece last week uh, where everyone got a chance to uh, have their GitLab set up check their code into GitLab and then use a runner um, where they uh, actually downloaded a container from Red Hat and uploaded that container back to GitLab and GitLab has a container registry and then set up different stages to do different things. So at a baseline, um, at a baseline they understand the concepts about it, right? But there's other things that go into that like linting, and securing and using Terraform Cloud and picking out the particular instances, your AMIs, securing your AMIs. And we're gonna get into that. And that's why you see Packer is on here as well too, because we can use Packer to build instances. We can use Packer to build containers. And this is AWS and then here's GCP. So being able to be in a multi-cloud strategy where you could do uh, even a hybrid cloud if you wanted to, where you understand all those things. And that's it. That's all I want to show. That's all I want to showcase. I promise I said I was going to keep it short. Boom. Done. Look at that. And I got time to spare. Look at God. All right. So those came out. I hope you all got some um, information tonight. Again, like I say, thank you, Joe. Thank you, James. Thank you all that had questions. Um, I think Amanda, um, I hope you got your question. I hope you're actually able to talk to someone. Uh, we actually do one-on-ones. We haven't opened them up because we've been busy. But again, I want you all to, when you come here, don't come here with the, with the mindset that we're going to beat you up every night. Come here with the mindset that you're going to grow and you're going to learn. We appreciate you, Luis. Thank you for Sunday. And everybody else, uh, uh, we'll, get, we'll get with you. My LinkedIn is Tamika Reed. Um, and I'll drop it if you're in our, if you're in our Slack, I'll drop our, my LinkedIn as well too. Until then, until we see you again, y'all. Y'all be y'all have a good night and be safe. All right, thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, thanks for having me. Take care, everyone. All right, all right. now.